Wow. The dogs is out. The dogs them out. So um I went to Egypt in February. So when I went to Egypt, those of you who know me know I create a lot of content here on TikTok as well as on Instagram. I'm originally a content creator. That is what I was trained to do. That is how I make a living main. That's where most of my income come from. I own a production company that does videography, photography for like music videos, TV commercials, etc. So naturally, when I go on my travels, I want to capture these moments. I want to um sorry, Topinizer. I want to capture these moments. I want to share it with my family and friends when I get home. And I also want to share it on social media. So I have a small travel drone that i travel with that i take with me when i'm traveling so i can have like um so i can have um footage to share so in going to egypt the research that i did about egypt and drones one i saw tons of drone footage online so i definitely knew one of the things that gives you signal that you can fly your drone in a country is if you search the the travel footage from the country and you see that they have lots of drone footage so if i go and say mexico and i see when i search mexico i never see a lot of drone footage so i know immediately so mexico is not a big population for flying your drone so i didn't bring my drone to mexico because i know me never either gonna be able to fly it and when I researched Egypt, there was like tons of drone footage. There's drone footage everywhere. Drone footage of the pyramid, da da da. But I know that overall in the world, there are places you cannot fly your drone because of safety and aviation and whatever. So I knew I'd have to find where ever these people are flying the drone so I can go there and fly my drone. So also from my research, I also learned that if the country does not allow drones in, so say for i know a country that i think it's honduras one of them country that not allow drones in so what they do is they take the drone from you when you are at the airport on entry and then give you like one little receipt and then when you leave in the country you just collect back your drone and left which is fine yeah i mean them not take your drone you can't use it in the country you have to follow them laws because you're tourists so i was let in with the drone so i was now, the research didn't tell me that the drones are illegal. It just told me that they had problems with professional camera equipment. But like I said, my drone is a small travel drone. So it's possible so them could have seen it and think so it's a little camera or something. Yeah, sure. So them let me in at the country with the drone. So when them let me in on me, I said, oh, maybe it's not as bad as it, as it seems. Because nowhere online did anywhere inform me that don't bring a drone. That, uh, the only thing I saw online about um, like filming in Egypt was they said that you had to be careful because they had a lot of military and the military did not want to be filmed and which was fine with me because me not try to go Egypt for film military. Me go Egypt for film pyramids and them something that make me give a shit about military. So I'm like, Psh. I have no intention of filming military. So I um I go. We had a good somewhat good vacation because egypt are never my best destination who see my video about my first impressions of egypt like eh. so um i go to i go to egypt we had a good time we're ready to leave now in those of you who've traveled before know how airport work you go into the the check-in hall you check in for your flight then you go through security then you go up to your gate in Africa, it's a little bit different. You go through security first. So you go through security first, then you go to the check-in hall, then you continue on with the journey. So when I was entering the airport, I go through the um the security checkpoint. They run my suitcase to the security checkpoint and we're on the other side. So when I come out on the other side, the guy now, he's looking at his monitor while my suitcase is going through and I could hear him like mumbling to himself him go him say drone like him a question why him just see a while ago like him a say drone and him look up on me and him say drone like him a ask me now do you have a drone and I didn't say anything and him look back on him screen look back on the suitcase 
and then the man starts shout out drone drone and then a security come over then him say open oh, mm, like they might get like little bit aggressive now they must say open oh, mm, suitcase because them not speak fluent english you know them just speak words out of the english vocabulary so the man say open oh, mm, suitcase Put the suitcase and them go in the suitcase and grab out the drone. And the man grab out the drone and hand it to the security man. And the security man take the drone and carry it over one other side. When him carry the drone go over the other side, um, the man look at me and say, give me passport. So at this time, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, them just like confiscate, confiscate the drone. Because, like, even though I did all of this research and them never do nothing on my way in, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay maybe maybe i eat this maybe i eat this they might go um they might go <laughs> they might go take the drone oh yeah my friend this year was with me so um the guy said passport and he take my passport and him carry it go over to one table now at this table there's like four or five men around the table and they might deliberate you cannot tell that these guys are like airport officials. Them just look like regular people. Them not even have no like jacket and tie or whatever. Them just have them regular. Them just did it. Them just sit down on the table and a converse and sitting. Because these guys sit down there. So them are all and pull everybody were coming at the airport. You know? So it wasn't just me. Like people did it where I get all and pull and dig up and whatever anyways them have my passport them have the drone so me no know what I'm. so i walk over to the table now to find out what is going to happen now so i say to the guy what is going to happen now like like what but like i said they don't speak fluent english so the guy said to me like him say sit down five minutes but in my mind me i say you don't say this is a trap me now sit down so i decide for stand up so I stand up over there now. Mind you, I left my suitcase empty over there. So, you know, I left my suitcase empty on the conveyor belt. So I come out of this because I just them open it to take out the drone. So I left it over there. After we did it for about 20 minutes or so, the man come to me and said, I have to move my suitcase. But I said, I want to make them uncomfortable because I want them to speed up my process. Anyway, finally, I moved the suitcase. Move the suitcase off of the conveyor belt now and left the suitcase with my friend. So them did it and them. Look through the drone and them did it. All of a sudden, them just assign more security and say, This give the man two pieces of paper because they're not a computer or nothing. Everything they are right with Anne. So, the man, if anybody knows how hier hier hieroglyphics or hieroglyphics or however the Arabic writing, you know, they write from left to right in a little symbol, symbol, something. Them. So, that's how they do. They write left, so a man write three pages or something, hand it to the next man. And him hand it to the next man, and the next man said, Come to me. Like him said, Come. Like him said, Come. So I go off with the man, and the man go through one door with me and start going down one alley. So the man, when, like, I was calm at first, because I was saying, like, I just wait for him to give me back my passport. But so when the man carried me through the, the door, and me I looked down upon the dark alley, I said, No, man, I eat this. So I send my friend my location, I text him my location come here and say, whatever I got happen, I saw human trafficking and they sitting there start. This is how the nightmare them in the movie, I saw it begin. Don't want a dark alley with somebody where you don't know you don't speak their language. So the man carried me down a couple curves, a couple corners for a minute. When he carried me down the alley, we reached the first door. When we reached the first door, he knock on the door, open the door, say something to the person inside, and tell myself to sit down. Now, me decide from down at the bottom, say, oh, me not sit down when time then tell myself to sit down. Me not stand up because me not listen to nothing what they say. Now, me did all dress. At this time, me all dressed and sitting for go out. Because me all get somebody to teach me how to tie the turban on my head and sitting so my head tie up and something. So, it's like, yeah, me there at the airport, me, me excited to go to the next country. Anyways, we did our wait and we did our wait and we did our wait. And my friend asked me, say, we're going to miss the flight? I mean, I said to him, say, no, we're not going to miss this flight. We're not going to miss this flight. So the guy now comes out of the room, take my passport, looking at the passport, and then looks at me and say, where from? I mean, I said, that confused me because I, mean, I said, why are you asking where I'm from? And you have the passport in your hand. I look, where from? So I look up and say, Jamaica. So the man said, like he asked me twice. He said, where from? And I said, Jamaica. 
So the security man now I look for me and uh, them say sitting to each other. Then that the man they take the drone now and go into the room. He take the drone, go into the room and give back the man one or two of the paper them went have. Because I three of them. So he give back one of the paper. So the man now have my passport and paper. Let me mind you, them people now no respect for your passport now. Because during this time, they just have my passport just a fling down and a put on and a put all every minute to drop on the ground and sit. Like, they have no respect for your travel documents. So any point in time, the passport could have slipped out of somebody on our side off in one gully somewhere. And me just start get frustrated. So the man I said, come. Like, he's a security man, you know. So I now try to fight with the security man. So him care me. Go cross it, like we just have go further and further down dark alleys and rooms and sitting. Eventually we do like two, three, four man, two, three, four office. Then we reach out last office. Him said to me, him turn around and him say one word to me. So all this time nobody now communicate with me. You know, him turn and him say finish. Like him I say, like him I say, like this are the last step now before him bring me back down here. Mind you, we are like an hour and a half away from the flight leaving the airport and me not check in yet at the counter so me start to ask my friend now me tell my friend say go at the counter go check in and check my bag them like a yours because we got the online boarding pass but remember them have to check well you don't know but they check our covid tests and some other documents in order for us to be able to um to check in for the flight. But me already have the online boarding pass. So me I say, if they're going to check that, they're going to check it at the gate. So I tell my friend, say, go at the counter, go check we in and check my bag as yours. So I explain to my friend, me I say, whatever they might charge, just check the bag like a your bag. Because based on how they might move up so with me and look like me I come out. When I reach at the last room now where the man say finish, when I reach there like five other people outside. And you can each, the people that were outside, each of them like assigned one security. So you have me and my security. Then you have one next lady and for them security. You have two people who look like them about to get deported. Because one woman a ball. Like she a weep. Like she na she na like alligator ball pan the ground like funeral ball. But you can see tears are running her face and she a weeping at the corner. I mean, I said, God, this is a serious room there, you know. Oh my god, sorry for the curse word. If there are any Christians here listening. Anyways, I start to myself, say, I see you soon, I know some, I start to get hot. Because I get nervous, my heart beat fast. I don't know what is going to happen. So I take off the sitting off of my head. Because I say, I start to get hot, I don't want to unpack me. I did have one jacket, I take off the jacket. So when I take off the jacket now, I realize that everybody in the room start to get nervous. Because when I take off the jacket, I don't know you, you guys know that I'm, I have a lot of tattoos. So when I took the jacket off, no, my tattoos were showing because I had on pants, so the tattoos on my foot were not showing. But, um, and I had on the jacket because you know, you're traveling the airports and the planes get cold, so I had on the jacket, so the tattoos on my arms were covered and my head was covered because I was traveling. So, I'm gonna take off the sitting off of my head now, so the blonde hair are show, the white hair are show. I'm gonna take off the jacket because I get hot, but really and truly, I never do this maliciously, you know. I was just doing it because. I just I get hot and I'm nervous and I just want to take off all of the extra things that I have for my body. So I take off the jacket. When I take off the jacket and the tattoo, them start to show. I start to hear the man them with the other security guard. They start to murmur. Like, it'll be like, let me see if I could explain the reaction. It'll be like, somebody say, eh? In the corner. So I say, so I start thinking to myself, I say, oh, this makes me uncomfortable because then tell me if you sit down in a book. Remember, from the early part of the story, I tell you, I tell them, I nah, sit down. So I pace back and forth in the hallway. I just pace back and forth. All my security guard try to talk to me, I don't listen because they don't speak English. I don't know what to do. So I try to figure it out. Zin. So I pace back and forth, back and forth. So now I realize everybody starts to get uncomfortable because there's this girl now that is not arabic she's not uh i think it's jew right jewish she's not jewish so now my full of tattoo my ear bleach out like i am the girl with their fear with their money of their money of fear one woman the representation of a woman like me so me realize say that give me little attention that now make me um make them start paying me little attention so because of the murmuring in the hallway, the guy in the room now says something and legit, the security guard will take care of me, get up off of the chair and run going in the room like him sprint 
go in at the room. In spring, go in at the room and give the man my passport. And the man called me. Like, then called me to the doorway. And I said, man, like I said, they don't respect, you know. Like, you could see that them and your belief say them are the pinnacle of authority because of how them address the security guard and how them ask me for information so the man looking at my passport i look through look for all of the stamp them are sitting now looking back at the situation i feel like they thought i was a spy but when me did it in the situation i never ever think that so me, me, me start for the door and the man look up on me and the man say where are you from this guy unlike the rest of guys has better english so he was like conjugating proper english sentences so i could i didn't have to like deduce what he was saying i knew i understood from he spoke he was like where are you from and i said jamaica and him looking at my passport look up back for me and he said jamaica and i said yes and him looking at my passport and he looked through it one like him looked through it look for all of the visa and all of the stamps and he look up and he said where are you from where are you from like him asked you two times like him i said like I said, don't tell me no lie. Tell me where you come from. Where you come from? I mean, I say, Jamaica. Like I say, you live from Jamaica here? I mean, I say, yes, I live in Jamaica. So him, no, he must, him search, him, like, must him search and him find the, the visa when we get to come Egypt. So like them sister, me not illegally enter the country. So him type, him have a computer. Him type sitting in a computer and maybe he might type it off for the visa maybe if you look for my home address come up or something so when him type it in at the computer now maybe i don't know the information come back i don't know but him look up on me look down on the passport skip through the passport again look on the picture look for me look on the hey it's a good thing what one thing i think work in my favor is because i when i took that passport size picture i had short hair but between everybody knows that the passport size picture take from long time so I grew my hair during that time, so I had locks. But I cut the locks last year. So now I look more like my passport picture than I did like a year or a year and a half ago. So me I say, if me did have locks, and this man I look and see me with locks, and me not look like why I had the passport, a problem for me, you know. Anyway, the man say, the man say, all right. Him look on the passport, look on me. He say, all right, go sit down. Five minutes. Now we into the hour of when the flight i go take off you know you know like we are run out of time that time my friend text me the whole time he must say we're gonna get you i mean i say i don't know so we go back outside they must say sit down i say me now sit down so me start pace you know my friend i text me my heart a beat fast everything happened so it's like he might text me me can't read nothing because everything blow up on the screen so i start sending him voice note because my my, my, my my voice shaky so me i say like me can't focus long enough for text so me i start sending voice note right so me i said to him say um i don't know what is happening them now speak directly to me they must speak to each other they must speak in arabic i don't know what they're saying so me i paced back and forth so while me did they know like me i send a voice note then me i send it in a patwa so now them now understand what me a chat say come in and speak english so the guy in the room me hear him say something and the security guard get up going in the room and come back with him i say like he must say please like he must say him says like he must say please sit down please i'm, I'm like i'm not sitting down so i'm typing at the google translator i'm like you guys can take the drone i am leaving i need to go and catch my flight so them keep on asking me where i'm two questions then keep asking where i'm going and where i'm from so at the time I was going to Kenya, my final destination was Kenya, but the flight connects in Ethiopia. So it's like they keep asking, where am I going? And I say in Kenya, but the flight, the flight information that they have, the first stop they would have seen would be the stop in Ethiopia. So I don't know if they were thinking that I was lying or whatever, but it, after a while it looked like somebody get the digits that were happen. So when I tell me, you're like when I'm on, I say, oh, Kenya, Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. So it look like them understand say so I just want connection um, in Ethiopia. Anyways, we didn't know. I mean I send the voice note them. So the voice note, me I'm a tattoo them, I'm a bleach out here. I make everybody in the hallway uncomfortable. So them out there murmur sitting. You want a security guy take it up on himself. With my heart a beat fast and me they stress out. The man I go said to me, say the man, this is literally the man. The man I go go, hey, and point like you know that point, like say I must take it elsewhere. Sir, we are tattoo. We are tattoo. Me say, I'll cuss your fart in the hallway. Me say, 
I say, you think me I want a woman them over here, sir? You think me I want a woman them on have a subject and beat out them blood clots? I mean, no, they not understand. No, what me I say? Some of those are cuss right through. So now me I make up all of this nice in the hallway. And see, now me I pace back and forth. And me not hear when time and tell myself to sit down. Because me start freak out. Because my friend I tell me, say, nobody in the left in the line. And the flight are bored. And me just, me start sweat. Come here and say, listen, I don't know what is going to happen. Anyways, because of all of this, I felt like they were trying to, to like, the guys in the office to, like, speed up whatever they might do with me. So, them call the guy.